Hussey is board certified at the American Board of Neurological Surgery. He's a 1996 graduate of the University of Heidelberg. Uh, and since uh, he's working at the Tri-State Brain and, and Spine Institute at Riverview Health in Crookston, Minnesota. And also with Dr. Lindsay Vertalski, a uh, doctor in physical therapy. She's a 2012 grad from UND and coordinator of physical therapy for Riverview Health in Crookston, Minnesota. So let's welcome them. Well, good morning. I'm not sure if this is working. Do you guys, uh, are you guys able to hear me all right? <coughs> yes, I think it's working. Well, it's a beautiful building, and I'm happy. It is my first time here, and thank you for the invitation. Um, I'm going to talk to you about, uh, first, the nature of the pain, because we, before we go and talk about the spine and the effect of the pain, on people's life, on our patient's life, uh, I want you to understand what pain actually is. It is not really clear to everybody. We know everybody has pain and so on. And uh, we know uh, from our own experience uh, that uh, uh, what pain is, we have scales for that and so on. But let's start with something like that. Like, which of you is not going to treat that? <laughs> which of you is going to tell to the patient, um, go live with it, it's not too bad. We won't, right? We will all treat that, we will take it very seriously. But what about this one? You're already a little less emotionally in invested in this, right? But then I show you this. No, again, you're engaged. No, you, uh, you want to treat that again. And with the full, uh, all the uh, options you got there. Now, what about I tell you this spine feels to the patient the same like the first or second picture. You have a degenerative disc disease, bone is rubbing the bone, um, collapsing and pushing on the nerve, and you have a direct pressure on the nerve. And to, I tell to my patient, I understand <coughs> how their pain is, and I compare it to when you hit your funny bone on the table. There's nothing funny about it, right? That is how direct pressure on the nerve feels, and uh, imagine having it not just for a few seconds, but for days and months at the time. Our patients don't look with a broken bone sticking out of their side. They look like this, but more. They look like this, and they look like this. I have back pain myself. I had an um, accident, and I had a, for years I have back pain. I know what back pain is, and I can't tell you I have a broken bone. I used to have a broken bone treated a long time ago. The back pain, I would take the broken bone any time of the day. So, all pain is in our head. Just imagine that, you know, if uh, anybody uh, has any doubt about the nature of the pain, you should think about that every kind of pain, the broken uh, bone pain or a psychogenic pain, at the end of the day, all pain is on, in our head because we know we can put you sleep and do whatever surgery we want to do. And uh, uh, you tolerate that, you don't jump off the table. This guy is enjoying it, obviously. See, it is, it's not about only the pain. Pain is a sensory input. It's about your emotional response to the pain that makes the pain so, uh, so grave. How do you respond to that? And we understand that. We can do a procedure called simulotomy. And I did it a few of that, uh, that 20 years ago. They're coming out of fashion for other reasons. Once you put it, uh, uh, um, I'm trying to see if I can activate the laser here. Uh, button on the top. Button on the top, there it is. So, you see that area one, that the anterior part of the single gyrus? If you put a lesion there, um, people have still the sensory of the pain, but they dissociate the emotional response to that. And uh, having said that, they wake up, how bad is your pain? 10 of 10, let's go have a coffee. So. We understand a lot about pain. I'm not going to go through all of that, but pain is a, just the noise of a smoke alarm, that something is wrong, and uh, do something about it. Otherwise, your system will uh, destroy itself. As a matter of fact, there are some genetic disease that the pain receptors are missing. These kids, by the time they are five years old, they are losing their fingers because they don't learn not touching sharp or hot objects. By the time they are teenagers, they have lost most of their uh, you know, uh, 
and like an up to ankle or to up to the wrist. So this is how uh, what pain is. I'm not going to go through this. Uh, I just want to give you an example. I was in 2000 and I think it was 2003 where the Texas City explosion was in, the, I was a resident in Galveston. We got this uh, uh, many different kind of burn patient and um, this, we got people with fourth degree burn that bone was sticking out and 80% 80, 80 of their body. They were painless. They had no pain whatsoever. We could do the fasciotomies without really anesthetizing them because they wouldn't feel that the apparatus that, that would make them feel the pain was gone. So they were practically pain free. So pain is a, to a certain uh, level is a good thing. Now, I'm not going to go through that, but our understanding is very profound about how pain works. From what segment to what segment it goes, where it goes to the brain stem, to the thalamus, and then uh, it gets connected to our limbic system to uh, produce emotional uh, response and a reaction that save you from the stimuli that has caused that. I'm not going to go through that, but um, you're, you're living in an area that there are lots of farmers, right? You know, th this is a video on YouTube. You can go and look it up. They catch it, they, ca they catch it cattle <coughs> from grazing. They brand it, the cattle stand up, goes back grazing, it's like nothing has happened. I cannot imagine any person would behave like that. If I get you from your dinner, Put you down, brand you, and then let you go. You wouldn't go back to your dinner. You, you, it's, um, we have much more emotional response to that. We will come back to that. It is a, the chronic pain is a, something that we know only from human beings. And in the, most of the animal uh, work, it doesn't exist. But it, I'm going to come back to that in the next talk. Uh, why is it important that we have this emotional response? So practical nociception is that the, uh, your host is on fire, do something about it. I'm not going to go, we understand the pathways and the, we modify the, the molecules there and the pathways and so on. I, I don't want you to go out with lots of you know, names and so on here. I want to give a feeling to you how, what that really means. This, that was nociception, meaning uh, truly something is destroying something. Neuropathic pain, if they, <coughs> then the apparatus that the, literally the neurons that convey pain information are damaged. And do you see the fire? What about now? Do you see the fire now? So psychogenic pain is not pretending, it's not like um, uh, 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 I'm trying to uh, tell you I have pain so I can get something out of you. Psychogenic pain is as real to the patient who's having the psychogenic pain as uh, when you break your bone. Because as we talked about, at the end of the day, pain is in your head. So just think about that. <coughs> and the proof of that is once you can desensitize those pathways, you know, there are uh, eyewitness that literally this monk in Vietnam didn't move an inch during the entire process. He put himself on fire and you know, literally was calm during the entire process. So um, I see a lot of patients that are told it's all in your head and you just go live with it. We as medical professionals, we have to understand uh, how this works. That, so that if you resist, if, you're, if you feel you have to tell a patient it is all in your head, just resist that urge because you know, at the end of the day, every pain is in your, in your head. So, um, Phantom pain, it's another kind of pain where the, the, the signals, um, the problem is not central, the problem is uh, not in the, where the pain is generated, but the problem is where the pain is carried over. Like, you know, you have a limb or you have paralyzed, your nerves are uh, completely destroyed, but still that signal is getting produced not where your hands are, but somewhere in your spine, like avulsion or um, if it, there's a damage or a paralysis. And then, it, it, that could be something like this, uh, you know, if you, if you can see here, you have a cavity inside of the spinal canal, in the spinal cord, that pushes the nerve from inside, so that is where the pain is originating. Now, I, I, I'm not going to go through the lots of these uh, names and so on. Obviously, I'm going to talk to you about some of the uh, common pain management. Um, 
um, like we know that there are most of these uh, non-steroidal works where the nociception, where the pain is generated. They prevent that generation of the pain in the first place. Or um, we know that the <coughs> opiates, they modify, they modulate the, how the pain is perceived in our spine and in our brain. And we have the, uh, as well, you know, they, we have a good understanding of the receptors, what works where. Um, don't try to read this, but uh, just let me explain something what that means. There are numerous receptors for opiate, and all of them, they down-regulate, meaning if you give more opiates, they, you have less receptors, so that, that, that's the nature of addiction. Except in one place, in, brain, in our brain stem, our uh, receptory, our uh, uh, respiratory system doesn't down-regulate, meaning that you need more and more and more pain medication, narcotic, and then all the other systems are used to get more, except your respiratory system. That's why you all of a sudden quit breathing and you die. That is what this all this epidemic is about. The people die because they don't uh, downregulate their respiratory system. So this is all you need to get from this picture. So this is a real problem. Now I'm going to tell you about a few um, take home for, um, uh, for your practice. Which are, uh, how many nurses and uh, doctors do we have here that uh, directly administer pain medication? Please raise your hand if you administer pain medication yourself. Nobody? Okay. Okay, so well, then I'll keep that uh, segment short because I think these are truly uh, 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 pearls of managing the pain and uh, uh, giving pain medication. Um, are you guys familiar with patient-controlled anesthesia? Yeah, it's a very effective thing. It's a, it, uh, uh, it's a where you put it, uh, pain medication on the pump and they can give themselves pain medication. It's safe because the patient has to give it uh, to themselves. The danger is if the family or somebody uh, is a little resilient, start pushing the button for the patient practically within safe limit, they can uh, self-medicate. Um, I want to talk to you as well about the adjuvant ter therapy for the pain, which is extremely important. This, uh, you understand that if you understand that the pain is not the is a sensory or emotional response to pain make the pain so um, something to the, is so severe to deal with. Um, I'm going, but you know we, we know that you know like many of the anticonvulsants can reduce our emotional response to the pain centrally, so that's why um, they are used. Um, and I definitely want to talk today about the cannabinoid, you know. Um, we know they have a similar effect, uh, reducing the emotional response rate. They, are, they have been found to be very effective, but because we couldn't do research with them for so many decades, uh, they, we are, our knowledge is not as poor as like, with like opioid, the receptors and so on. The time is now that uh, 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 we start doing that research, understand that they come in so many different kind of uh, flavors <coughs> and they activate so many different receptors. It's time to work about that. Now, obviously, um, if uh, other means don't work, there are other ways of uh, uh, treating the pain, including um, things like spinal cord stimulation device where we put electrode on the spine and give it small little jolt to prevent the pain signal to pass through, or pain pumps where we give a narcotic in the spine, in the intrathecal space, the minute dose where it goes literally to the uh, spine and modulate the pain signal to pass through without having systemic effect of the spine. And these are new things that are coming. Um, the deep brain stimulation devices, you remember we talked about the singulotomy and I told you it's getting out of fashion because singulotomy is literally putting an electrode and heating it up and burning that place. Now we can do that same thing with putting the electrode and giving signals that uh, temporarily um, put a temporary lesion in the singular gyrus. Now, um, since you are not administering pay, uh, medication yourself, I'm, I'm not going to keep this short, you know, but there are always questions um, about some medication. This uh, visceral or um, hydroxyzin has been very helpful, at least in my practice in post pre-operative cases, but more to import operative case, to again, you know, uh, uh, help the patient to reduce their anxiety about ambulation. And uh, for, I think, in physical therapy, you will notice that people are, are on this 
are willing to work with you better than people who are not on this. Now, Ketrolac, you know, is another medication. It actually works, uh, it's a cognitive inhibitor, works on the pain generation. Um, it's a very effective, all my post-op patients are that, and where I'm going with this is that uh, all <coughs> pain management these days is uh, multidisciplinary and multifaceted with multiple medication to reduce the need for narcotics. Whereas 10 years, 20 years ago, we just would give more and more and more narcotics. Now we combine different medication to reduce the, the uh, need for narcotics for one agent. This is a question I think it's important for you if we are doing physical therapy that, you know, what to use. Um, obviously, value has a central effect and flexor has less central effect. So it helps the patient ambulate and we know uh, um, at any level, patients with musculoskeletal problem, we want them ambulate. We want them ambulate and that's important for that to not centrally sedate them. And then um, um, we have uh, the medication that mostly they were used uh, for seizure, but now we are using them to modify how the pain signal is passed from one neuron to another. For certain kind of pain, they are very effective. So, and I think this is your take home. Um, uh, I, I would say, you know, if you have just these slides, uh, you've got everything I want to tell you. First of all, pain patients are painful to everybody. And, you know, they are painful to, your, to their family, they are painful to the nurses, to the physical therapists, to the doctors. But that, we chose this profession. We have, to, we have to professionally deal with them. Start early pain management, before those paths in the brain are set. You remember psychogenic pain that is real to them? Once those pathways are, are set in place and strong, it's hard to break them. We have to stop, uh, you have to stop thinking about you know, the, being afraid of narcotic. There's a place for narcotic, and that is before those pathways are set in our brain. On the day of the surgery, you know, if you see a patient on the day of the surgery, um, um, we have to do our ABCs, like you know, uh, 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 airway, breathing, um, and uh, uh, circulatory. But then, um, don't uh, uh, try to hold back on pain medication on the day of the surgery, because that pain, you want to break that uh, uh, kind of circle that here goes with that. And um, and what I think you know, the, uh, you as well get from this that. Um, as well, people who are pain seekers, they can have organic problem. We should not, never dismiss, uh, even you know, if somebody you know is a drug addict and has lots of different problems, even they can have organic. And I've been guilty as charged, have fallen into that path to believe that you know, oh, same thing for the twentieth time. And then when I put the patient through a protocol that we have developed, we understand now that you know they have some other problem maybe. Now, um, I'm going to not, uh, uh, you know, just uh, uh, cut this a little short here because as I understand, most of you are on your daily basis are not treating pain um, with medication and this is most important in the floor and in the hospital to treat that. And uh, uh, so, uh, but I want to just mention that before I go to my next presentation. And um, you are familiar, uh, who is not familiar with this uh, chart? Everybody familiar with this chart? So, and uh, that is, there's a problem with this chart. You know, the, the problem with this chart is totally patient subjective. Like, um, um, how many times do we hear um, somebody who's sitting on that chair and, you know, have a smile and says, how bad is your pain? 10. And then, you know, uh, pick up the phone and start texting and so on. Pain is a, a, a vegetative response. It's a, there are lots of pathways involved. And uh, certainly, uh, this chart almost suggests you just ask the patient and write down what they uh, um, what they say. And we should do that, but we should as well use our own uh, discretion. I tell many of my nurses, if in question, if it's the question to give pain medication or not, take this chart, put it next to patient's head, and see which one of these more, uh, you know, is similar to patient's face. Not, don't, don't take only what the patient says, as well use your own judgment. If somebody is smiling and says my pain is <coughs> 10, they don't match. No pain medication. 
So, the, the, but you know, we have gone a little the wrong way. We just uh, ask for a number and uh, write it down and act on it. And uh, when I'm called at 2 a.m., patient said pain is 10. I said, how does it look like? Does it look like in pain? What's the blood pressure? What is the heart rate? So you have to start as well use our own judgment. So with that, I'm going to um, uh, stop this one. Um, this presentation, and I'm going to go to the actually to the next presentation.